Nicknamed Tridents, the regolith and ice drill for exploring new terrain is NASA's latest attempt at finding a way to sustain humans on a trip to another planet. The drill, part of NASA's The Polar Resources Ice Mining Experiment 1, is under construction by Honeybee Robotics in preparation for the agency's manned Artemis mission. Prime One's entire purpose is to gather resources from the moon to determine whether utilizing a planet's resources would benefit astronauts. With a launch date in December 2022, Prime One's leading resource will be Trident, a 1 meter long auger drill with a sample capacity of 300 grams. While the drill has been in development since 2016, the project's potential has really kicked off recently. Originally designed to collect lunar surface samples, the Trident project has now evolved to collect lunar ice, a critical part of NASA's goal to let astronauts survive off the moon or Mars's natural materials. The real reason this project hadn't kicked off in the past was due to scientists having not confirmed that the moon's lunar regions have collectible ice. Well, that and nobody could manage to situate a rover with a drill powerful enough to bore, collect, and bring back pieces of the moon. That's where Trident is set to change things. Through Prime One's launch, the Trident drill will see its first taste of space action, where it'll be launched to one of the moon's polar regions. In addition to bringing back lunar ice, NASA hopes that Trident will be able to obtain water from subsurface level reservoirs. If any of this sounds familiar, it's because it is. NASA has fitted Mars rovers with collection tools before. The Perseverance rover has its own drill, albeit much smaller. The thing is, there are a few things differentiating NASA's new lunar ice drill and the Mars samplers of the past. The first is obvious, we're not really getting back any Mars samples anytime soon. All surface analysis from the Mars rovers have come directly from onboard computers, with the data sent over to Mission Control in the United States. Spacecraft sensors are great, don't get that wrong, although they're constrained by time, budget, and the sheer size of state-of-the-art sensors. Include the fact that the Mars Sample Returns Missions Project scientists have said that we can't actually bring back any Mars samples until 2031, and you can see where previous cracks have appeared. That and the Mars rovers didn't have the power of a 1 meter long auger drill attached to its body. According to NASA, Prime 1 is similar to prior missions on Mars, but with more real-time operations, and 10 times the depth. Previous and current Mars missions have only had the ability to dig up to 10 centimeters into the ground. Triton's capacity to dig 10 times the depth of a Mars rover is dramatic enough at first glance, but the quality and amount of collectible substances increase exponentially the further down you go. After all, sending Prime 1 to the moon is only 1 200th the distance of sending a rover to Mars. That immediately provides a much higher potential for actually bringing back the samples on board. Speaking of which, Trident will provide this mission the ability to collect and retain samples, alongside serving as a drill. As a 1 meter auger, Trident can dig into the ground and collect samples, a task that no previous mission has succeeded in. Just August 12th, Mars rover Perseverance's drill came up empty, with Mission Control finding the rover's first rock sample to have utterly disappeared. With the addition of the Prime One's rover mobility, the Trident drill can gather higher quality, larger samples and bring them back to Earth. Trident's collection method is even named Seek Drill Dump Close, which is to be used either in analyzing or returning samples safely. NASA's Prime One project page says that the Trident drill will extract lunar regolith up to the surface, through drilling in multiple segments, pausing and retracting to deposit cuttings on the surface after each depth increment. That's incredible for a rover of its kind, as Trident will be able to actually bring up samples to the surface without needing to collect them along the way. While the immediate benefits are apparent, shown in Prime One's ability to pick and choose samples and NASA's chances to observe without filling up the rover's limited carrying capacity, there are dozens more. After all, Trident and Prime One are to be fitted with a mass spectrometer designed to evaluate the drill cuttings for water and other chemical compounds. NASA has even said that samples from multiple depths will be analyzed, yet another task not previously accomplished. With that in mind, let's look at Trident's second major benefit. If we revisit NASA's website, we can visit the quote which mentioned Prime One being similar to prior missions on Mars, but with more real-time operations. You hear the interesting part? With more real-time operations. The reason that matters is because communication to Mars has a default 5-20 to 20 minute communications delay. A communication to the Moon, however, rests at just 2.4-2.7 to 2 .7 seconds. I'd bet you can find at least one kid playing online with Earth-to-Moon lag, unlike with Mars's. At least, I'd hope not with Mars's delay. You'd lose a game before you could even connect. Anyway, that's the point. 
With the distance between mission control and a rover severed this much, we'd be able to control Prime 1 in near real time. That would result in much greater precision, higher quality video, faster data transfer, and many other benefits. NASA could even dig meter-deep holes in the moon, decide the bounty isn't worth it, and literally drop the material back into the lunar surface. NASA will be able to, in near real time, view and analyze deposits and samples from multiple depths, roaming the moon's polar areas for water and ice. That's incredible, especially considering how much more NASA will immediately learn from these samples, with human pilots on the other end. Atop being able to be piloted remotely, Placing Trident on the moon is expected to be much cheaper and have a quicker mission time than with previous rover. According to the Goddard Space Flight Center, it would take roughly 7-9 to nine months to arrive on Mars, compared to 3 days for the moon. Not only does NASA have to wait less time to immediately begin observing and collecting samples on the moon, but they can also settle with cheaper launch vehicles and shorter mission lengths. Trident and the Prime 1 mission are on track to be flown to the moon by Intuitive Machines of Houston by December 2022. Intuitive Machines is the company behind the Nova Sea Lander, a payload container with a capacity of about 130 kilograms. Mid-2021, Intuitive announced that they had chosen SpaceX's Falcon 9 as their launch vehicle, with up to 1,000 kilograms of secondary payloads attached to a dispenser. NASA has awarded the company $47 million in October 2020 to deliver the drill to the moon. That's a minuscule number for the agency, especially considering the insight that Prime 1 and the Trident drill will give them. If successful, Prime 1 will land near the moon's polar regions, where the rover and the Trident drill will immediately begin drilling. With Trident being just 1 meter long and 36 kilograms, it'll be able to maneuver incredibly well, meaning that NASA should receive their first scanned sample within a few hours of landing. Afterwards, Trident will do what it's built to do, mine lunar ice. Or, well, look for lunar ice. Again, scientists believe that there are large reservoirs of water beneath the lunar surface although Prime 1 will be the first lander to actually check that hypothesis. In addition, we already know that the lunar poles have ice, although whether or not it's easily collectible is another question entirely. So, this drill will not only give us insight into whether or not the moon's ice is collectible, but also if there are water reservoirs within a meter of the surface. Alongside Prime 1's onboard mass spectrometer, NASA will be able to remotely study the ice and or water and reach a conclusion pretty quickly. While we don't know exactly how much lunar debris NASA is expecting to collect, we do know that Trident can collect upwards of 300 grams per delivery. Prime 1 and Trident use a planet vac collection system, which can put up to 300 grams of a sample into a cup. The cup can then be returned to Earth for further analysis. That's not a lot of material, although that sample alone should provide sufficient information as to whether or not prospective astronauts would be able to use lunar ice or water for their benefits. Plus, we don't know how large of a payload capacity NASA is planning to put aboard Prime 1, meaning that Trident may end up collecting dozens of 300 gram samples to return with. There are still quite a few unknowns about this lunar ice drill, although what we do know looks to be quite interesting. With a launch date in 2022, Trident and the entire Prime 1 mission looks to be a great way of collecting and analyzing lunar ice and water, with the hope of deciding whether it's human viable or not. If this mission goes successfully and proves to the world that the moon's ice and water reservoir is accessible, then who's to say that the same isn't possible on other bodies like Mars? What do you think? If Prime 1 and Trident collect ice samples successfully or find water reservoirs, will NASA plan to use the moon's resources in a future trip? Do you think they'll instead send a rover to Mars to collect samples? Let us know in the comments below, and make sure to subscribe to the channel for more space news every week.